Aloha, I'm Terry Lilly, a marine biologist here in the Hawaiian Islands. I hope you enjoy my film. The Hawaiian green sea turtle is a very special creature. I'm a marine biologist living in Kauai, and I've been diving with these wonderful turtles for the last 20 years. Here in Hawaii, we call them honu. These turtles have been around on the planet and in the seas for millions of years. It's magical to be able to go out and scuba dive or snorkel with one and get right up close to them and look right into their eyes. These are very ancient creatures. They're connected directly with the reef, in the sea, the fish, and the other marine life. They're very old spirits. When you get right up close to one of them and have it come up and look you right into the eye, you gain a lot of knowledge of the reef, the sea, and patience. Some of these sea turtles weigh hundreds of pounds and are over a hundred years old. Turtles are one of the oldest living creatures on the planet. These sea turtles can stay underwater for up to a half an hour, sometimes even longer. They start their life when they hatch out on the beach. The babies go out to sea and live the first part of their life out in the middle of the ocean. These magnificent creatures almost went extinct in Hawaii here a number of years back. Then they were listed on the Endangered Species Act and now their populations have rebounded back and they're quite plentiful. People from all around the world come to Hawaii to swim and be with the green sea turtle. It's our primary turtle here in the Hawaiian Islands and in some locations, there may be 20 or 30 in one small spot that you can scuba dive with or snorkel with. The big male turtles have a longer tail, like these two here. The female turtle on the bottom has a shorter tail. That's one of the ways you can tell the sexes. These turtles have very little fear of humans because they're not being hunted anymore. And this is really precious. They're intelligent. They seem to know what you're doing underwater. I even have several of them that I see every time I go out scuba diving and I have names for each individual turtle. One of them I call Ananalu. And when I go out for a scuba dive in the Hanalei area, she meets me at the edge of my boat and takes me on a tour of the reef each and every time. Sea turtles can live right up in the very, very shallow water close to shore or pretty far out to sea. Depends on what they're looking for for food. The new hatchling baby sea turtles, when they leave their life out at sea for the first couple years, usually eat jellyfish. But most of the turtles close to the Hawaiian Islands that are near shore are feeding on limu, the seaweed that grows here plentifully on the reefs.
their shell is very hard and so they don't have to worry about crashing into the rocks like us humans do. This one here is being kind of goofy and looking for food in a hole right next to the edge of the reef. I hope these special creatures stay listed on the endangered species list so they will remain very tame and plentiful here in the Hawaiian Islands for everyone to see. The green sea turtles actually sleep underneath the rocks and cracks in the reef and they sleep for only a short period of time compared to what us humans sleep. They may be down underwater for a half an hour taking a nap under a rock and then come up to the surface, take a breath of air because they have to breathe and then go back down to their special hole in the rocks and take another nap. As a general rule, the sea turtles move very, very slow. This is a really old one. See all the wrinkles on the neck and the green algae on its shell. This turtle weighs over several hundred pounds and it's a female. These turtles actually can move extremely fast especially when a tiger shark is chasing them, trying to take a bite out of their flipper. But most of the time, when you snorkel or dive with one of these special creatures, they're moving extremely slow on the hunt, looking for food on the seafloor. There are very few wild animals that are this size that you can get up close to without harming the animal or changing its behavior and at the same time they're not afraid of you. Years ago when the green sea turtles were hunted here in Hawaii you wouldn't see them up close to shore or anywhere near people like you do now. That's why it's wonderful that they're protected under the Endangered Species Act. The flippers are just basically modified arms and legs. If they move their flipper on the left side, then they turn to the right. If they move the flipper on the right side, then they turn to the left. These turtles can do a barrel roll. They can swim upside down. They can actually crawl right up onto the reef. Sometimes you may even see them up on the sand. The sea turtles play an important part of the habitat for the reef. Just like these manini, these surgeon fish, they eat the algae on the reef. That keeps the reef clean. This one here is just relaxing on the seafloor wondering what this human's doing underwater with this big strange looking yellow camera. This sea turtle is coming up onto the shore to sun bask. Sometimes people when they see them on the shore they think they're dead. But they're not, they're just coming up to soak up some sun and dry out the algae from their shell. These turtles will go right up into one foot of water to look for limu that they feed on. And once again, the turtles help keep the reef clean. If there wasn't any turtles here, there would be more algae and that interferes with the growth of the coral reef. 
the turtles pretty much don't bother any of the other marine life. They all seem to just kind of ignore each other and live together. Very few creatures eat sea turtles. Humans used to, but thank goodness they don't anymore. But the bigger sharks will eat them. These sea turtles here are just hanging out on a spot where they've hung out for so many years, they've worn the coral smooth. As you can see with the scuba divers in the background, most of the sea turtles just look at us humans in kind of a curious way. Not threatened at all. It's not legal to go up and harass a sea turtle, touch one, chase it, or try to catch it. And one should never do that. But it's completely fine just to hang out with them and wave at them and talk to them underwater. Try to figure out what they're doing. They're looking at us probably trying to figure out what we're doing. People flock to Hawaii to see these turtles. There's very few places in the world where you can see so many of them in a short distance or a short area. As you can see, this turtle is just cruising right with the people, right with the divers. They don't expend much energy when they move slow. Like all cold-blooded animals, sea turtles don't have the ability to regulate their body temperature like us people do. Their body temperature is basically the same temperature as the ocean. If the ocean's a little colder one day, their body temperature is a little colder. When the water is chilly, sometimes the turtles move a little bit slower than it is when the water's warmer. But most of the time they don't like to expend much energy because that means they just would have to eat more food. Did you know that sea turtles have their own version of a car wash? This is really super fun to watch underwater. I've had people say, oh, I saw a bunch of fish trying to eat a sea turtle. Well, what these turtles are doing is they are visiting what we call a cleaning station. It's basically their car wash. They just cruise into a designated area and it's the same place every time. And when they hang out there, then the fish come and eat the algae off their shell and parasites off of their skin. Here they're being cleaned by the brown surgeon fish. Other places, especially on the big island, they get cleaned by the yellow tangs and it's quite a beautiful sight. It's super, super, super fun to sit and watch this. I counted one time 12 different sea turtles at one cleaning station, all being cleaned by different fish. What's fun to do is to go out and hang out at one of these cleaning stations. This one here, I was with one of my dive buddies and the turtles were being cleaned by some of the convict tangs. And I thought, wow, I wonder what'll happen if I hang out at the turtle cleaning station and I act like a turtle. I wonder if they'd come and clean me. Well, I actually tried this. The turtles all looked at me just like I was another turtle. Everything was just fine. I put my arms out and my legs out like the turtles do, telling the fish that I want to be cleaned. Well, it worked, kind of. The fish all came and started cleaning me, 
But what I didn't realize, that these fish have sharp teeth. One of them bit right underneath my armpit and tore out a whole chunk of skin. <laughs> So I learned right there that it probably was not a good idea to try to mimic a sea turtle and get cleaned at the turtle cleaning station. Being the turtles have this hard shell and very tough skin, these fish aren't gonna hurt the turtle at all. But for us humans with soft skin, they would bite holes in you if you did the same thing. This one's being cleaned by two fish, one of the coli and then also the menini. Here we have a number of turtles hanging out at the cleaning station all at the same time. This is really kind of a fun thing too to do with uh, divers and snorkelers that come from out of the area because I know where about 20 of these different cleaning stations are and we can go out there and 99% of the time unless the surf's really big or some kind of really bad storm hang out right in the same spot with the turtles while they're getting cleaned Sea turtles primarily eat algae. They have a very strong beak. I mean, their jaw could break a pencil or a finger in half if they wanted to. They eat the algae right off the rocks, but a lot of times they eat the rocks right along with the algae. You can see a number of the small fish, the saddle wrasse, follow the sea turtle because as the turtle is eating the algae and pulling up little bits of the reef, it also causes little creatures to come up from under the rocks that the fish hang out and eat. This turtle will spend most of its day eating the limu, and that's a Hawaiian name for algae that grows on the reef. They eat a number of different species of algae. I'm not sure if anyone really knows which ones that they eat and where, but probably they eat different species for different nutritional needs. Most of the algae here in Hawaii grows in 5 to 30 feet of water. So that's where you're going to see the sea turtles mostly at that depth feeding on the limu. Their shell is very, very hard. They have a plastron and carapace. And actually their upper and lower shell is a modified part of their backbone and their breastplate. The turtles are somewhat hollow on the inside, so their backbone is exposed right to the open ocean and what makes them be so hard. So therefore they can run around and get tumbled out or therefore they can swim around and get tumbled up onto the reef and the coral without getting hurt. It's really fun just to sit and watch one of these turtles feed because they'll completely ignore you. Just having a good time finding their algae, meandering around the ocean floor, not bothering anybody. When the sea turtles are young and they live out at sea, they eat mostly jellyfish. Sometimes on the shore, I've seen them eat jellyfish and also squid. This sea turtle I got a movie of feeding it the, in the nighttime. This is something at the time had never been documented. Out at Tunnels Reef, where I took this video at, the turtles are active all night long feeding on the reef. They're so loud underwater that you can actually hear them crunch the rocks as they're eating the algae. Often you'll see the turtles feeding together, 
but sometimes you see them separated and just feeding all by themselves. They don't seem to follow each other around or swim around in pairs much. They just hang out at the best places to eat. Like this spot in Maui, there's a lot of this eelgrass that's growing on the sandy seafloor. This is a delicacy for the turtles. They'll meander out there for hours at a time, pulling up and eating the seagrass. And as you can see, this one is getting a mouthful of sand along with the seagrass. As he's chewing it up, snorts it out of his nose. Sometimes the turtles in an area are extremely beneficial for the reef because they clean the algae off the reef and then that allows more room for the corals to grow. But in Hawaii, we've had a big coral die off, especially here in Kauai. And there's a lot of algae on the reef right now, which is not good for the health of the reef but it's actually giving more food to the turtles. There are many types of sea turtles throughout the world, but we primarily only have two that visit or live in the Hawaiian Islands. This is the rare hawksbill turtle. Out of over 3,000 hours that I have scuba diving or snorkeling in Hawaii, I've only seen about a dozen of these turtles. They're not very common. They're really easy to tell the difference between them and the green sea turtles because the hawksbill turtle has overlapping scutes on the top of its shell. The scutes are actually scales, modified scales. You can see here on this young one that the scales overlap like the scales of a snake or a lizard. The green sea turtles have their scutes connected together and they do not overlap. One of the easy ways of telling them apart. The other way is they have a real pointed beak and that's why they call it the hawksbill because it looks like a hawk beak. That beak is very, very, very sharp. Uh, thank goodness the turtles don't bother or eat people. But the hawksbill, you can see, can reach way into a crack under the coral, actually way further than a green sea turtle can, and pull out some of the juicy algae that grows under there. So the hawksbill turtles can actually get into a little bit of a different place to get their limu, their seaweed, than the green sea turtle. Hawksbill turtles also grow large. Their, sca their, their scales, their scoots in their shell is usually covered with algae. The interesting thing is I've never seen a hawksbill turtle at any one of the cleaning stations where the fish come in and clean the algae off the shells of the green sea turtle. So who knows, maybe the hawksbills just aren't invited to the same cleaning station. But they usually meander along all by themselves, very peaceful. This one has red algae growing on its skin and its scales, which are called scutes, and that's pretty normal for them. These turtles behave pretty much just like the green sea turtles. They're also protected by law, and they also get eaten from time to time by tiger sharks. One thing that I've noticed with the tiger sharks is that the green sea turtles and the hawksbill turtles have learned that the tiger sharks come in and try to bite off one of their flippers. And when that happens, the turtle bleeds to death or can bleed to death, and then the shark will come in and finish up eating the turtle. So what some of the turtles have learned to do when they're being chased by a big old tiger shark is zoom right through a bunch of people out surfing or swimming, right up onto the reef where the shark corals won't allow the tiger shark to go. This one here you can see is doing an invasive maneuver, which it's basically looking at me thinking maybe I'm a big shark. So it's turning sideways and swimming really quickly so I would have a harder time attacking it. 
but if I got really close, it may zoom right up onto the reef. Sometimes that presents a problem because a shark may be biting at one of the turtles and bite a surfer by accident, which happens from time to time here in Hawaii. Like all creatures, green sea turtles get sick from time to time. Here in Hawaii, we have a problem with a papilloma virus that makes these white, ugly tumors that grow on the skin of the green sea turtles. It's really sad when you see one covered with these tumors because they actually can completely close their eyes, their mouth, and their throat, and the animal eventually dies. This sea turtle here lost its back flipper. It got bit off by a tiger shark. Actually, we call her tripod. She lived and she's incredibly in good health, very strong and very maneuverable. This sea turtle here has a fishing line stuck in its mouth and a hook and sinker. Here's a big one here with a really big fish hook stuck in her shell. We always try to take the fish hooks out and unwrap them from the fishing line if we possibly can, but sometimes it's incredibly difficult to do because these turtles are very, very, very strong. You're not supposed to touch any of the green sea turtles, but if you find one tangled up in fishing line, you actually can attempt to remove the fishing line. It's called the Good Samaritan Clause. But I tell you, it's awful hard to do because these sea turtles are so unbelievably strong and they often don't know that you're trying to help them. A lot of times the sea turtles with fish hooks in their mouth like this one really don't hurt them. It's these ugly tumors that cause the turtles to die. We don't really know what causes this. In some areas these tumors are way worse. We do know surgically if you catch the turtle and remove the tumors they tend to just simply grow back. In some areas, about one out of every 10 turtles has these tumors. And this one here that has since died got its whole entire body covered with tumors. We're studying this. We don't know if it's related to pollution or other problems in the sea. Hopefully one day we'll figure it out so we can help these turtles when they do get sick like this. This one turtle here, it's really, really, really sad because it lost its eyes. I took video of this turtle. Both of its eyes are completely gone. At one of the sites where we have this massive coral disease killing tons and tons and tons and thousands of corals on a monthly basis. We think this turtle may have contracted the cyanobacterial disease in its eye and lost its eyes. This is something we're really monitoring day by day, and occasionally turtles will wash up on the beach like this one dead. Usually they're picked up by the state and have a necropsy done where they try to figure out why it died. The best thing about the green sea turtles here in Hawaii is being here and swimming with them. Once again, it's really rare that you can have a wild animal like this that is so peaceful and so kind and so mellow around human beings. They don't have much fear of people, which is wonderful. This is one of the reasons that we really want to keep these turtles on the Endangered Species Act. If they're taken off the Endangered Species Act and they're allowed to be hunted again, we will lose most of the turtles close to shore in the Hawaiian Islands. Not that they're all gonna die, but they're gonna be afraid of people and they're gonna leave the area and very few people will ever get to see them again. So this is actually really important for tourism in Hawaii that we keep these green sea turtles and the hawksbill turtles listed as protected species. 
The other thing that the turtles do, again, is clean the algae off the reefs. So we want these turtles in good healthy numbers up close to shore where they can feed on the algae. This is going to help the long-term health of the reef. Here in Kauai, we have a lot of coral destruction. We have a bacterial disease called a cyanobacteria that's killing a lot of the coral reef here in Kauai. So it's really important right now to have these turtles here in good numbers to clean up all the algae that's growing on the reef. With rising sea levels, acidification, all kinds of pollution problems, we really don't know if the sea turtle habitat is going to remain healthy here in Hawaii for very long. So protecting them is probably a good idea. So hopefully your kids and grandkids, when they come to Hawaii, or if you live here, are going to be able to go out and spend time with these special creatures. This last segment here is me diving after a long day of taking video of the marine life with one of my favorite turtles out at Tunnels Reef. I've known this turtle for probably 20 years and she lets me get really close to her. We dive together, we talk to each other underwater and it's just a very, very special, unique relationship you can have with an incredible creature that's been on this planet long before humans have. Sea turtles, like most all reptiles, have males and females. They breed and they lay eggs. It's pretty cool. The sea turtle behavior and reproduction behavior is very similar with the green sea turtle as it is with the giant tortoises living on land in the Galapagos Island or in other parts of the world and the turtles that live on the land or in the rivers. They usually breed once every couple years, sometimes every year, but not that often. They breed out in the ocean or in the rivers, which is pretty cool. The male gets up on top of the female and they copulate. The male underneath its shell is concave. That helps fit up on top of the female's top shell so they can kind of fit together without rolling off of each other when they're breeding. Once they breed, then the female produces eggs that she holds internally. And then when she's ready, she crawls up on a beach somewhere, digs a hole in the sand and lays her eggs. You can see here the male turtle has a big elongated tail and the female turtle has a very short tail. So they're really easy to sex when you see them in the water. Even the small ones you can easily sex. These turtles that are breeding right here in the Hanalei River for the first time in many, many years is showing that they're coming back in the main Hawaiian Islands, breeding close to shore. The problem is they're trying to lay their eggs in riverbeds or up on a beach that used to have a lot of sand, and now that same area may be covered with houses. Thank you for watching. As you may know, Hawaii's coral reefs are under duress. The north coast of the island of Kauai is currently being ravaged by an unprecedented disease. If you would like to learn more or get involved, please visit our website at underwater2web.com.